Okay, good morning. Thank you for joining in for our class today. Um, uh, we've been uh, we've been looking at different kinds of counseling skills over the last couple of uh, weeks, and today we're going to come to a culmination of uh, those skills. We're going to be uh, looking at at the very last part of it, and uh, progressing into other. Uh, certain other topics also. I'd like to also welcome all the e-learning students. Um, uh, that you, Thank you for joining in. Thank you for ensuring that you have been on track with the program in itself. Okay. So uh, just a quick recap about what we did last week. We did about questioning skills in counseling. Um, we, we spoke about uh, the purpose of questioning skills. Why is it used? When is it used? Uh, what are some of the characteristics of its use? What are some good and effective questions, kind of questions that we could use? We uh, spoke about how we could use uh, uh, more of open-ended questions. And we also looked at closed-ended questions. We looked at some examples. We did, I think, two role plays. Uh, one was with Divya and uh, Jafina, and one was with uh, Divya and myself. So uh, I hope that really helped to uh, capture uh, how we could um, we could work through uh, counseling sessions with using some of these skills. Okay, so today we are going to uh, focus on um, uh, two skills. Going to add in a, a last one as well. Very little of it, but nevertheless, it's important. So we're going to we we finished with attending skills of attending, where we are building rapport. The next we looked at was responding. How do we respond to uh, the individual, how do we how do we respond to the feeling of the person? How do we respond to the content? How do we respond to meaning? How do we respond to feeling and content? So we've got up to there. Now we are going to get into um, the skill of personalizing. Now the skill. Uh, uh, I, just before I put up my slide, I thought uh, you know just just give you a little uh, a little brief um, outline of why this is a, uh, important. Now, if you remember, the the meaning of personalizing is to help the counselee take accountability, take a responsibility for um, working through whatever issues or concerns that they have come come with. So the process of personalizing it actually provides a bridge between your responding skills and uh, the the action the action of the individual if you remember the three processes the three uh, stages of counseling is uh, exploration understanding and action initiating action so when we're looking at the skills that we we have what you are basically doing is you're bridging it it becomes like a bridge from you respond, and before they move into a place of action in working out something with their with the issue they've come with, that's where personalizing comes about. So simply put, this process um, makes sense of what the counselee has explored in the responding phase, and it leads to a clear understanding of the initiatives that is needed by the counselee to change their behavior or to adapt to their circumstances or uh, to quit whatever uh, issues or uh, whatever behaviors that they may have or transcend them okay so whatever helps their growth whatever helps their well-being that's what you're doing so i'm just going to repeat that so the process of um, personalizing what you're attempting to do is to help the counselee um, get into a place of action from that place of exploration and understanding. And this process is important for them to take initiative, either to change uh, whatever behavior that they may have been, or, do, or to adapt to any kind of circumstances, or to keep away or to quit them with, uh, uh, with understanding, or to transcend them with peace. So the, the, the specifics of the goals that either lead to change or lead to adaptation, the, it's just not, um, we're not looking at good ideas that can be worth trying, but they are derived from uh, analyzing and helping 
the uh, the counselee gather the information that is generated through the exploratory uh, through that phase. So it is very critical that especially the exploratory phase has adequately considered all the pieces that are related to the person or anything that that requires for them uh, to to work through their situation. Okay, so uh, an exploration or a good comprehensive exploration actually paves the way for an effective working across this bridge that is from the responding into initiating where you are bringing about this personalizing so but was uh, and on the reverse inadequate exploration is likely to help them to retreat and and maybe continue in that mode of uh, um blame blame shifting or uh, throwing throwing responsibility onto somebody some someone else okay so basically the skill requires that we slowly move them from the place that they are into a place of actually internalizing and personalizing taking responsibility for their problem so that they are ready to move into action okay um let me just put up the slide and uh, then we can uh, then we could go accordingly. Please give me a moment. Okay, so so we we will get into some further details about um, about personalizing and and uh, you know figure out maybe through a case example how this can be this can be worked out. So like we said, we often find that our counselees you know, may continue the talk that helpless talk about other people or third persons. You know, it's their friends or their employers. You know, their teachers or their spouses or their children. Um, but by focusing upon others, what's happening is they are externalizing their experiences. That's what we said. When they focus on others, <coughs> they're externalizing their experiences. But what we're doing is we pass on to personalize the understanding onto the counselee themselves. So by focusing upon themselves, they begin to internalize their experiences so internalizing is what makes them accountable for their experiences that they say that okay i need to also look at it from my point of view i need to understand the situation from the way that i can i take responsibility for it i take accountability for it so personalizing assists the counselee in internalizing their experiences so by focusing again upon themselves that's where they internalize so the personalizing what does personalizing personalizing do it builds upon that base we have established in our responding skills as i had said before that is what we build towards we're building on that on that base and uh, uh, there again here we see that the attempt is to help them understand where they are in relation with where they want to be or where they should or where they need to be. Okay, So that's what you're helping them see, that they are coming to a place of knowing, I know I'm here, I'm in A, and from A, I've got to move to B. Like, for example, I know I am anxious or I'm uh, depressed or I am angry or I am uh, lazy or I am procrastinating or I am like this in the state of my relationship so they get to understand that and you are helping them see from this place where do you want to go which is the uh, destiny that you want to take so maybe it's from from anxiety it is to have peace from a sense of sadness, it is to have joy. From a sense of a broken relationship, is to have um, is to have peace. Or uh, from um, uh, from uh, maybe laziness, it is to coming into productivity. So what you're doing is helping them show 
uh, where they ought to be, where they need to be from the place that they are. So when you are doing this, you're actually helping to personalize different things. And this is what we're going to be looking at. You are helping them personalize their feeling, which means uh, whatever they are feeling, they come to a place of accepting that this is part of where they are at. And it's OK to experience this feeling, because that's what helps them to move into the next part or to personalize the meaning of the issue or of the concern or to personalize the problem uh, or to personalize the goal. Where is it that they want to go? So this is the effort that we take in moving them to that. OK, uh, I'm, I just wanted to uh, also state we are in page um, uh, 39, 39, if you all would like to uh, follow through, we're at page 39. Okay. All right. So um, so in personalizing, what, what are we attempting to do is, first and foremost, like I had spoken about, uh, you cannot come to a place of personalizing until you have helped the counselee build a good base of understanding themselves in relation to their problem. OK, uh, like, for example, if uh, let's say someone with um, with a substance use comes to you, someone who's who's into addiction comes to you and um, they are continuously in the complaint of, I don't think I would have been here if it were not for ABCD reasons or if it not were for ABCD people. So the minute that you that they have got there, they're still in that place of externalizing their problem. So until and unless we have given, we have taken them through uh, um, maybe times or, uh, or sessions where they have understood what is it that makes them uh, uh, take refuge maybe in the substance or in their smoking, whatever the issue of addiction is until and unless we have um, we we built that strong base of really understanding that okay maybe these have been triggers the father has been trigger maybe the mother has been a trigger maybe the school has been a trigger nevertheless there is something much more internal so until we've explored that until there has come a place of self understanding of it it doesn't make any meaning moving into personalizing because if we don't get there, they are still going. It is an indication for you as a counselor to know that they are still in that place of externalizing their problem. If they continue to say, no, I would I would stop drinking if my mother does this, this, or if my spouse does this, this I would stop drinking, or I will stop get being into this habit. Um, when, when the fighting in my house stops, then I will be OK. And that kind of keeps the counselor away from the real situation that um, there are these, you know, again, we looked at f those five stages of uh, five uh, um, of, uh, functions, those five, the, the physical, the emotional. So until we look there in that area to see what is it that creates this urge, this need, this dependence on, on a substance, we may not be able to move into this thing of personalizing. So it's extremely important to build that solid base of understanding with your counselee, um, uh, you know, as you're going through sessions. So even if that takes a while for them to understand the their contributions, understand their thinking process, understand their feeling processes, understanding their those crucial needs. We spoke about those three needs. Understanding that we, we are not doing justice. We're not helping them into moving into this level of personalizing. Because only, only till we have done that in a fair amount are we uh, bringing them to a place of readiness to get into saying, OK, this is my problem. I'm going to own this. I know that I am in this situation because of this need of mine. 
because of this kind of a thought process of mine or this kind of a feeling that overwhelms me, overwhelms me or this kind of critical needs that I have within that makes me feel that you know once I take this substance I can move out that so this is this is extremely important that personalizing can happen only when we build that so, that solid base of understanding okay um, so uh, now, as you are doing that, and, and we've done this so often, we've done this so many times, is to be able to respond. So going back to some of those skills is we need to continue to respond to their feeling, respond to their thoughts, respond to their meaning, to the content. So just as an example here, I've just taken this example so that you know we could move it into that place of personalizing. And the, 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 uh, the example given here is of a young student who who feels um, she's she's not doing too well at school and this is what she says things are not going so good for me in school i just seem to be floundering i fake it every day but inside i'm really down because i'm not sure of what to do or where i want to go so here maybe these are the first couple of sessions and this is where you continue to respond to the feeling so the the uh, what we picked up up until now is you get into this conversation of uh, really expressing your understanding of what the person is feeling. So here, she's not said anything about her response or about her feeling. She's not. She's not said anything over there. So that's where we 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 hit at first, or you know, where we explore first, getting into moving away from the content into the into the more. Um, feeling level. So here it's something like, okay, you may feel, you know, you feel sad, you feel discouraged, or you feel disappointed at yourself about uh, what's going on. And, uh, you know, so you're helping the this young student to really explore what's going on and why is it going on that way? What are the thoughts that come in? So then, you know, that's an entire process, like what we did at personalizing, uh, sorry, at responding. So if you if you were to look at um, why, what is the reason that we need to get the feelings out in the open before we can actually um, get to the skills of, of uh, uh, helping them to personalize is one, it helps them to first and foremost to be aware of that there are feelings like this that are there. It helps them to be open about it, helps them to learn to deal with it, that there are, yes, I feel like this, and it's it, it's there. I can't deny this. I can't suppress it. It is there. So the more that uh, you as a counselor helps to explore that feeling, the more likely they will be able to channel them constructively. And once they're able to see, are uh, able to give words to their emotions, then they have more clarity in thinking. As they have expressed their emotions, they begin to have a lot more clarity in what's going on. And this you must have noticed, you know, even as you're talking to people, as you have helped them to really emote and discuss what they're feeling, they have a lot more clarity. They may say, okay, now I think I understand what I should be doing. Because their, their feelings and their emotions have been tackled. They have been helped to do that. Okay. So what are you doing is next you are when you, you need to respond to their feeling and to the content. So in this case, what you're doing is you may, in Anita's case, you may say something like, um, you know, I see that you're feeling disappointed. I see you're feeling discouraged. Um, because things don't seem to be going well at school and you feel quite fake because of, um, of the way that you're responding. So I'm actually doing just that. I'm responding to the feeling and I'm responding to the content of, of her message or, or of what she has bought about. Okay. So the example here is, uh, uh, the example that, that's, that's given is that you feel upset because you're struggling with your schoolwork. So I've, I've just kind of briefly put it there just to help us know that we are still in that place of responding and it is leading up to that place of personalizing with, with, your, with your counseling, okay? Now, once you're able to, uh, once you've come to that point of, uh, of getting there where you, you're, where you are responding to their feeling, responding to their content, then what you do is you are going to personalize 
that. You're going to make um, uh, an understanding about how this entire situation makes them, uh, what, what it means to them. OK? So what are you doing here is you are bringing about certain implications. And that's a question that's there is what you're trying to attempt to see what are the effects of the situation on the counseling. So as a result of her not being able to do well at school, being able to fake, um, I mean, uh, being in a place of not feeling genuine about her course, how is it affecting you? How, how does it bear a burden on you? And that's what you are attempting to do in personalizing, bringing the entire context back to them. OK, so when you're first looking at the implications and the second thing that you're doing is, is you're looking at assumptions. So behind this situation or behind this behavior, there may be certain assumptions that the counselee is keeping. So there are certain personal beliefs that the counselee has that makes them feel the way about their situation. So you are, what you're doing here is you're challenging or you're bringing, uh, not challenging yet, you're bringing to the forefront all the assumptions that the counselee may have about her situation. So you're bringing to the forefront what are the beliefs, what are the assumptions, what are the perceptions, what are her thoughts, what are, what are her uh, ideas about this specific situation. So when you question it that way, or when you bring about a certain meaning, when you begin to personalize that meaning, that begins to take root. They, they begin to become more aware of the kind of beliefs or the thought process that really holds them in their situation. So let's continue to look at that example. So here, um, uh, when we are looking at personalizing the, the meaning, uh, here is what the counselor says. Says, you feel upset because your future will be affected if you don't do well in college this year. So there is an implication here, right? The implication is actually brought about here. What, what, what does this imply for you is that you're, you're worried because your future will, will, will be affected if you don't do well this year. So then that becomes like a, a right. Um, you know, I have, so what, what you're attempting to help the counselee think about is, yes, I have a part to play in whether my future um, will go well or not if I don't do well in college this year. And so that's what, that's what your statement may arrive, may, uh, may help to bring, bring about for the, for your counseling. So, so when you, when you throw about this, uh, uh, this belief that there is an inability to deal and cope with this pre pre pressure, that's the belief she has, right? The inability to deal and cope with the pressure. That's the belief. It's going to have an implication, which is that her future will be, will be affected. So when you're doing this, that's what you're bringing up you're taking it up to me okay now once that is done once you have bought about a sense of uh, the the belief that the, that the person has which may be okay I, I sense that this is what what you feel that you don't feel capable enough or that there is too much of pressure and as a result you can't do it now that's the belief and that it is going to impact your future so we've reached there now once that is there you're helping them own the problem you're helping them to personalize the problem. So what are you doing here? You're actually going to dive deeper in and to find out that what would be there about the counselee that could be contributing to this problem. What is there that may be contributing to this problem within the, within the counselee? And that is generally got by the statement like this. You feel sad because you cannot and you've actually bought about the entire problem over there so when you have placed uh, them in their problem their contribution of the problem they get to a better place of finding out what needs to be done okay so so here in personalizing uh, i'm sorry in in this uh, example uh, this this uh, anita has given a second part of her 
uh, her problem. So she says, I'm, I'm the school basketball team's captain. And I spend two hours every evening in practice. And I'm left with no time or energy to study. So she has brought about something here that is an added issue. Okay, So in, in our response to her issue, we could probably say, uh, say this. Like, like, for example, you feel upset because you cannot spend enough time studying. All right, or you seem to be concerned because of, of the pressures in your basketball team, you don't have enough time studying. So you've you've brought about this, this merging together of her own contribution to the problem, to the to the situation over here. So when you're doing that, it gets the it gets the person to bring about what should what should go about or what should happen next okay um, and let's say she's added on another another statement said i should never have agreed to being the captain so she's actually um, through the personal through the responding she's actually coming up and saying you know i shouldn't have done that because maybe i don't know probably how to manage my time so so here, you know, as you are going on, you're beginning to personalize new things. You say, OK, you feel angry because you seem to have taken on much more than you can handle. You feel um, you feel quite uh, uh, quite overwhelmed with all that you have to handle. And you really wish that, you know, you had done it differently. So what you're doing is it it's bringing the person back to the responsibility of, OK, I know maybe I've made a choice like this or I've done something like this. Now, again, it, it comes back to me having to figure out how I can work this out. And that's when you move to the next part, to personalize their, go their goal. Okay, What is it they want to, want to do? They want to move from A to B. Okay, So this is where they begin to demonstrate that they are ready to move away from discussing all uh, her problems, Anita's problems of being fake and not being able to study or the basketball thing, from discussing that into saying, OK, I want to figure out what I should do, what I do need to do about it. And this is when they are more ready to respond to their problems the way we have been doing for them. So now they feel a lot more uh, um, uh, empowered because then you will find the statements will change. It will come up, come up to, yeah, I think I feel quite overwhelmed because I don't have time to study and I have, uh, I have these many responsibilities. So it's so the more that you know when you're building it up for them, you're helping them to see that this is what it is for them. Then they begin to own it. They say, yeah, I, I agree. This is how I feel. I feel quite overwhelmed. I feel there are, there are too many things because I cannot uh, maybe handle so many so many issues. So you've got them to a place of figuring out that they would like to rework their situation, rework where they are at. And that's where <coughs> you begin to establish where the, the counseling was to where they want to be and what might contribute to resolving the problem. So you're, you're basically, what you're helping them do is they have understood, OK, this is how I'm feeling, and this is my problem, and this is why I have got myself in this place. And so you move it to personalizing the goal. So, so bringing about something like you feel dash because you cannot and you want to. So the, the, the problem is there. And you are getting, uh, you know, getting into the into the actual goal. So here, there's another another line that she continues to say. She says, "My dream is to become a doctor, and I've taken the science stream. I did poorly in my first term exams. I'm disappointed in myself for not studying enough." So if you were to personalize both the problem as well as the goal. What, what you would essentially get to do is you're merging those two together. You're bringing those two situations together. Like, for example, you feel bad or you feel uh, upset because you cannot put in the hours required and you want to be able to 
uh, do well in your exams so you can get uh, you know a, a seat uh, in 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 medical college so this is what you're doing you you bring about the response or the feeling and you bring about the problem okay you feel bad because you cannot but you want to be able to do that so this is where again that you are helping to merge that and bring them to a place of understanding okay so yeah this is that's the example again you feel bad because you cannot put in the hours required and you want to be able to uh, sh make sure that you do well in your exams now what are you doing over here you're actually helping them to begin to get into your next stage of um, uh, initiating that action all right so so from from here this what are you doing is you're doing a check first so throughout your process of personalizing you are getting them to really have a feeling check about where they are with respect to their goals and here's where you say Zanita says yeah I really you know I really want to do well in my exams and that kind of helps you see that there seems to be some urge or there seems to be some uh, some way to move forward right and so this is how you know when she says yes I really want to do well that's how you know when you when you begin to personalize that you say okay you feel hopeful because you're going to figure out how you can do well in your exam so it becomes a place where the counselee comes to a to uh, a stage or or to a platform where they begin to figure out what can I what should I do now now I've understood that I need to do well in my exams and I feel hopeful because I have understood that there have been there has been this thought I feel incapable I I, I know that about my future there are those implications that have been brought about you bring them to a place of hope bring them to a place of another feeling where they are able to figure out how to take this forward so uh, so through this entire entire personalizing you are you may need to go back and forth over over up over down but what you are basically doing is first and foremost building that base where you're responding to the feeling and content bringing them to a place where they've personalized internalized the meaning of that entire issue over them uh, internalized and personalized the problem they say okay this is my problem and personalize their goal this is okay this is where I want to go and that's a great place when you would like that the counselee is in but they says yeah now I do see <coughs> that I would like to work through some of these issues or work through that so they've come to a stage of saying okay I'm ready you know they've, they've expressed to you that there is some bit of readiness that they find in in wanting to move to the next stage okay uh let me stop here uh are there any questions even as you're moving remember i said it's a bridge between your responding and between and, and into initiating action so any thoughts any questions um anything that you you'd like any support or help for <coughs> excuse me No questions? Yes, Divya. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so the question that I'm having is, uh, uh, so when uh, you're dealing with the counselee, uh, do you uh, like backtrace from this end goal? Like uh, if you, at the end, you came to a conclusion, right? Uh, wherein mm -hmm. uh, this is, the problem and this is the this might be the goal uh, that mm -hmm. she can have so in that case so do you just uh, you know backtrace from there and ask the questions and um, likewise or uh, sometimes it's hard to keep all these things in mind right so how I just right. want to know like how do you usually um, go about so depend okay now uh, maybe each issue that the counselee brings up there may be certain different goals that are there right like for example um this 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 girl the student anita she knows she needs or, or you've come up to that point 
where she says, OK, my goal is to do well in my future so that I can get a seat uh, in, in medical college. Now, that's the broader goal, OK? Now, that is, it's like an umbrella goal that you have. Nevertheless, uh, as you're going to look into initiating action, that goal may need to be broken down into smaller parts, right? That um, in order for her to move across that goal, there may be smaller, uh, um, simpler goals that she may need to achieve. So through your counseling or through, through the process of this, you're giving her or you're helping her see that's the broader picture and keeping that focus there and moving it back into more simpler tasks. So they, so let's say she may say, OK, um, so in order to get there, I have to start small. I have to probably start with maybe organizing my time. Maybe that's the beginning of it, right? Or it may be putting in extra hours of study, right? Or something like that. So let's suppose those goals don't get met. Then you need to, again, you are bringing about the greater picture. Like, for example, I may say something like, uh, you know, it's, it's probably you, you feel really uh, worn down by the fact that these smaller steps are quite uh, tedious that uh, you know you have to you have to really put in work every day so she says yeah it is i'm i'm actually i actually feel like i want to give up so so you can so maybe you're saying you're feeling uh, you, you feel upset or you feel uh, you you struggle because you're not able to follow through these goals nevertheless you have a desire to do the big one so remember again i bought back Personalize the smaller goal, uh, the smaller goal, and looked at the larger, larger part. So she says, "Yeah, I just, I, I don't think I can, I can work through this. All right, this is the way that I feel." So going back, okay. So if, if that were the case, if there were the smaller steps you could do today, what would it be? So then I, I refocus back on the smaller goals when I may actually keep that bigger umbrella goal in sight for her to keep working on, to keep motivating her, to encouraging her to move through that. So yes, I may trace it, trace it to the goal. I may trace it to smaller goals, depending on how she's being able to progress into that. So yes, we continue to do that, all because we've established it once. It may not mean that is forgotten, but that becomes something to catch. That becomes the, the aim, right? Uh, it is it is to do well in college or it is to build that particular relationship that becomes the broader aim and so we have, we we bring it back to smaller goals yet keeping the bigger goals in mind did that answer your question divya yes 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 ma'am yes okay uh, all right yeah. okay. i believe the counselors have to be really optimistic yeah yes i mean you have to uh, and and this I think this is somebody something a trainer told me. Uh, he said, you know, if you see someone sitting in front of you for help, uh, it's because they want to do something about their problem, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be sitting in front of you, right? So that's why they're there. So the very fact that you have someone uh, in front of you is a clear understanding that. They want something out of this, even though it may be uh, a, a very steep, um, steep journey. And, and that's why we keep that that uh, uh, optimism, that hope alive for them that, you know, uh, we can manage it, we can do it and not go down. Uh, to, so you, you need you're a hope giver. You're, you're someone who is going to continue to encourage them that something that they see as a goal is something that that we can we can get okay yes yes thank you thank you ma'am. all right any other thoughts any any other responses if not we'll move into the next one okay so from here we we're going to take a slight d route because um, we're going to be adding something called as influencing skills. Now, influencing skills basically helps you, uh, are skills that helps you to influence, OK? 
Now, this is something that you may use throughout the throughout your uh, uh, sessions, uh, you know, here and there. But they are important because um, it pushes your counselee towards change. It helps to promote that change. Uh, it it helps to give them that nudge into moving ahead. So so influencing skills come as a result of um, of you wanting your counselee to move into into the next level of of help. Uh, for them okay so let me let me just uh, share let me just share my slide okay so um what is uh, i think just by the word in itself uh, it's probably clear as to what it is. The word influence is generally basically means to, to, to have a power of producing some effect um, without really exerting too much of force, without uh, uh, maybe an apparent uh, exertion of force or a direct command or a direct uh, exercising of your influence okay it is a skill where you're taking you're helping the counselee take that proactive step towards change so it basically means to flow in it's it's flowing in it is an it is a it is a way of producing a certain change or an effect without really pushing or without really bringing them to a place of uh, too much of, a, of an exertion, okay? So uh, looking at these skills, um, influencing is part of all counseling, all right? And, and you would do that maybe, uh, look at the way that you may be talking to somebody, you may be in some way influencing them, right? So even if uh, sometimes just by your attending skills and your active listening to them, uh, and helping them to uh, feel that they're being genuinely heard can also influence their behavior, okay? So influencing skills uh, can take a more direct approach to the change that you want to see in your counseling. And uh, what you're doing, wh why do you do that here is to add in alternatives for action that can bring about change that is quicker. So yeah, like I said, it's a catalyst, you know, like, like when you've lit a fire, you put in a little bit of kerosene, the fire, fire um, goes up a bit more. And that's what you are hoping to do to, to accelerate the change, to promote the change quicker and to make, sometimes to make that change a little bit more permanent as well. So what's the, again, uh, uh, similarly, the, the, the purpose of it is to bring about change the way the counselee chooses to think or act. It's actually adding a fresh perspective and hope into, into their lives. Okay? So this is when is it used? It's used when they are exploring alternative ways of thinking or behaving. And I, and I find that these skills are based a lot uh, needed, especially when you're helping a counselee, um, uh, when you're when you're working with a counselee to challenge their thoughts or challenge their beliefs about something, right? Mm -hmm. That's when you're actually influencing them to think alternately or to to behave differently. Like, for example, you have for uh, in in the case that we saw in Anita's case, we determined that. Uh, uh, Anita felt uh, she was inadequate, or she was she was uh, um, she didn't have the ability, or she was faking it, right? So when you brought this up in into the forefront, you know, probably bringing up, okay, you know, this is how you feel. You feel uh, extremely inadequate uh, about the way that you are experiencing. So then maybe you've explored it and helped her see that those are thought processes, maybe asking her questions like, what kind of thoughts do you engage in when you feel like this? So she, she may say, yeah, I, I keep telling myself I'm useless. I keep telling myself I'm inadequate. I keep saying that I'm good for nothing. So you've got there to that place. 
and now you're helping to explore you're going to explore and help her look at alternative ways of thinking so you want to challenge those thoughts you want to get her to know that if she's able to have if you are able to equip her to change the way she thinks the way that her studies goes can go well so that's what you are you are trying to equip her to do so and some of the techniques that we do is what we call as the as as influencing skills okay so we will look at a few of the there are many but uh, we we will just take uh, take uh, some examples of these influencing skills okay so one of the most um, commonly used uh, influencing skill is that of confrontation now the skill of confrontation it's it's an it's an important counseling skill to have okay but there is always a right way and a wrong way of doing it so what does confrontation do um, confrontation helps the counselee face themselves realistically especially when they interact maybe with other people or a certain situation okay so here what you're doing is you are bringing them to a place of identifying what are some self defeating patterns or techniques or thoughts or methods or manipulations that they are using for themselves so uh, you're making them aware that you're confronting them you're bringing them to a place of awareness that this uh, could this these thought patterns or these self defeating patterns affect the way that they are uh, in their problem or in their solution affect the way that they could get that solution so it challenges them to integrate these aspects and then you know find ways to come out of it um when when you look at uh, stories or when you look at um, uh, uh, the counselee stories um you will see that they often have certain contradictions now the contradiction will be between a thought and a feeling or there can be contradiction between a feeling and a, and a behavior or any other combination like that like for example they are they are saying uh you know i want i want to do mbbs so i want to do medical college but the thought process is i'll never get a seat in there or i'm not smart enough so you see that there is a contradiction between where they want to go and what what actually is is happening and what happens is they also have very ambiguous feelings um that that uh, that they may they may be feeling too opposite feeling simultaneously they feel like a lack of uh, uh, ability okay so so that brings them to a, to a place of uh, disappointment and they have hope because of what they say or what they want right so they are sometimes they are unaware of this they are unaware that they are moving into these polar opposite um, uh, emotions because of what they are thinking and what they would like to see maybe their behavior or or their feeling or their thoughts so it those combinations can be very very different so in order to help counselees address this distress it is essential that these inconsistencies are brought to their notice and brought to their uh, understanding and their attention and it is to be addressed otherwise they can get very stuck in that problem okay now when we do that what can happen like I, when i said it i said you know there's a right way and a wrong way of doing it. if when we do it the wrong way it's easy for them to become very defensive after all you know uh, we need to remember that uh, when someone comes to you as a counselee they somehow in their mind see you as as a one up position okay you they see you as someone you know, who knows everything but that's not the truth right uh that is they, they they see you as the expert or they see that you have the greater power in that counseling relationship but if counselors uh, you know if we aren't very careful of how we confront they uh, a counselee could feel negatively judged they could feel actually quite put down 
So in other words, they can actually feel worse than they came. So what is a good confrontation? A good confrontation is gentle, is supportive, and accurately reflects what your counselee has shared with you. The, <clears throat> the idea is to help the counselee explore their own conflict more deeply. Okay, so they need to see more deeply that there is a, dis a, a discrepancy between the way they are thinking about it and the way that they want something. So they explore that more deeply with the goal being the new idea or the plan that will benefit the, the counseling. For example, OK, that, that if I change my thought process, maybe I would be able to enjoy this goal or enjoy the fact that I could reach the goal. So the counselor expresses, and when you're doing this, you express the genuine confusion to the counselee in a quest to completely understand the counselee. So framed it, when you frame it this way, gently, supportively, looking at the benefits of it, the counselee will feel more cared rather than feeling a sense of judgment of the issue. Let's just look at an example that will that that could probably help help you understand this uh, better. Okay, so here the counselee is saying, um, "I just don't have time to exercise, and I don't have the money to join a gym anyway. But I really want to lose weight and feel better." Okay, so there you find a discrepancy. She doesn't have time, and uh, she doesn't have money, but she wants to lose weight. Okay, so here's a wrong way of saying it. You're just making excuses then. You know what's good for you, and you refuse to do it. So that's true. OK, that's, that's quite accurate. But it's not. It, it, it sounds very judgmental. But maybe a right way is, uh, on one hand, you know exercise is good for you. But yet, on the other hand, you seem to not want to do it. Could you explain this to me? Right? So you've actually bought this up to for them to explore it deeply, right? So that they may come up with some kind of an answer or some kind of an understanding of it. Now, all because you've said this statement doesn't mean that you know all things are going to go right. It may, it may actually need multiple ways of confronting to get them to a place of saying, you know, there is a discrepancy here. I would like to settle that, uh, settle that uh, in in a way. Okay, all right, okay. Um, Shall we? I think we are we are time. Um, we're way ahead of time. Uh, we beyond time. Or shall we uh, stop for a break and then we'll come back? So it's ten fifty three on my clock. We'll get back at eleven three. We'll see you soon. <laughs> 